So it turns out that the shitbag is back. For those of you unaware of who Graham Linehan is, he was once a comedy writer who faded into obscurity before making his presence known on Twitter. How? Well, continually targeting and abusing trans people and those that support us, including people such as Linda Riley, a cis lesbian and the publisher of Diva Magazine, Europe's leading magazine for lesbians and bisexual women. But because Linda is more than capable of speaking for herself and won't be bullied by a man into accepting his transphobia, Graham set about attempting to discredit her lesbianship. Because, as we all know, Graham loves to protect the wands. Now, at the end of 2018, Graham Linehan attended to have funding designated for a trans youth support charity, Mermaid, a charity that offers support and advice to young trans people and their parents, withdrawn. Linehan took to famously transphobic forums such as Mumsnet to demand that they copy and paste his letter, sending it off to the Big Lottery Fund, a letter that accused their charity of offering children hormone replacement therapy, among various other things. Even though Mermaids is a purely social support charity and has no dealings with pharmaceuticals of any kind. Now, thankfully, OVU found such claims to be entirely baseless and the funding resumed as well as an extra lump sum which had been raised during the review period, giving Mermaids an additional quarter of a million pounds on top of the half million pledged by the Big Lottery Fund, after which he slunk back to his toxic corner of Twitter, a funnier joke than any he'd written in his dead career. However, just over a year down the line and he's re-emerged, this time asking his fellow transphobic bigots to supply him names of therapist and that's a word I put in captions, who are happy to torture children to try and convert them. The tweet reads as, quote, Some assistance required. The extremely awesome Stella O'Malley is trying to assemble a list of Irish gender-critical therapists as a resource for parents. Can anyone help? End quote. Stella O'Malley, by the way, is someone I've exposed previously for deliberately lying to the general public about puberty blockers comparing changes in persistence rates in young children to teenagers, whilst acting as if these samples are the same. She is more than happy to lie about the science to further her transphobic agenda. Much like Graham. Now, perhaps you read that tweet and didn't think much of it. After all, it's just a call for gender-critical therapists. Why is that a problem? Well, gender-critical is a euphemism for transphobia in the exact same way that race realist is for racism. It's meant to make the bigotry sound more scientific and therefore palatable. The truth, meanwhile, is that every major medical establishment condemns the self-labeled gender-critical approach, which is a form of reparative therapy, though, as noted earlier, it is in fact torture. Said methods are abusive and inflict severe harm on the victim in attempts to turn them cisgender and force them to adhere to strict and archaic gender roles. It's totally destructive, a fact agreed upon by the UK Council for Psychotherapy, the American Academy of Pediatrics, the American Medical Association, and the US Substance Abuse and Mental Health Service Administration, to name a few. O'Malley and the so-called gender-critical therapists have to ignore the entire scientific consensus in order to defend their position as even remotely ethical. Their methods are about as scientific as forcing a child to drink bleach in order to cure their autism. Not only does it not work, but it invents a problem where there isn't one. Only last year we got clear results from the Trevor National Survey on LGBT plus youth mental health. 42% of LGBT plus youth who are the victim of so-called reparative therapy attempt to commit suicide, compared to 17% who aren't victims. This number actually increases for trans youth to 57% suggesting that people are more sensitive towards attempts to change their gender than attempts to change their sexuality. Whether this is innate or as a result of cultural differences, i.e. lesbian, gay, and bisexual people are more likely to find support elsewhere than trans people, is really irrelevant. What really matters is that trans people are at a greater risk. Fact is, the survey also looked into attempts to convince people to change their gender or sexuality, just in case Linehan wants to bullshit his way by pretending like he's not advocating for conversion therapy. What the survey found is that 23% of LGBT plus youth attempted suicide 
if someone had attempted to convince them to change their gender or sexuality compared to a baseline of 8% of those who hadn't experienced such attempts. So repetitive therapy actually increases attempted suicide from a base level of 8% all the way up to 57%. And that is, regardless of how we might protest, what Graham Linehan is attempting to support through his actions. The torture of children who he believes should not exist, that they need to be eradicated like a disease. And there's been even more evidence to come out to support this since the Trevor Project survey. In November of 2019, an article was published with the title Association Between Recalled Exposure to Gender Identity Conversion Efforts and Psychological Distress and Suicide Attempts Among Transgender Adults in the JAMA. That is the Journal of the American Medical Association. The American Medical Association being the largest association of physicians and medical students in the US. It is regarded highly in the medical community because, in large, it kind of is the US medical community. Now, the study itself conducted research on 27,715 transgender adults living in the US, 3,869 of which had been exposed to GICE, gender identity conversion efforts. They found that, quote, exposure to GICE before age 10 years was significantly associated with several measures of suicidality including lifetime suicide attempts, end quote. They also found no significant difference when comparing religious or secular conversion attempts, so it's not a case of finding the right way to do it. There is no right way to do it. You're simply torturing someone for the sake of inflicting pain, and that's fucking disgusting. And the thing is, we know how to help young people who are questioning their gender and that is to take the gender-affirmative approach. That is an approach that allows a child or young teen to explore their identity with support, no matter the conclusion they arrive at. And compared to the gender-critical approach, the results of gender affirmation is that the rates of anxiety and depression, the things that bring about attempted suicide, these decrease to levels equal to those seen in a cisgender control. Children exploring their gender who are supported in it show levels of depression and anxiety on par with the rest of society. This is not a debated topic. This is not controversial. The science is entirely one-sided. If you want to help your child, then support them in exploring who they are. Affirm their gender exploration. If you want to torture them, though, force them to see a gender-critical quack like O'Malley or another one of the disgracers on Linehan's little list. I believe very strongly that adherence to transphobic torture should result in instant revocation of one's license, as well as sanctions in line with those in place for other child abusers. Because that is what it is. Demonstrably. Another thing that should be happening is the social media accounts promoting said child abuse should be terminated. Throughout the years of Linehan's transphobic abuse, Twitter has done nothing, and it's long past the point of being fucking ridiculous. Do we just allow advocates of acts that can be demonstrated, not asserted but demonstrated with scientific evidence to be child abuse? Do we just allow them to continue to promote said acts? By doing nothing, Twitter is telling people that they're on board with supporting the torture of children. That's just the way it is and it needs to change. So yeah, I hope you gained something from this video and the resources it has applied you, because that is why I do this. It's less about convincing people such as Linehan to stop being a pro-child abuse fuck. It's more about supplying you lot with the resources to stand your ground should the topic of affirmative care versus reparative torture come up. Now if you appreciate what myself and Adita do here on the channel, do know that you can support us via Patreon. Your support gives us the funds to keep going and keep putting out videos involving this level of research. You can also check out our other videos on the channel to see more of what we have to offer. So with that said, we'd just like to say a big thank you to our Patreon sponsors, giving a special thanks to the following people. Hannah Banghart, Matthew Kovac, Soraya and Katie, McGay, Wellington Marcus, Atlas5 and Sash Daniels. 
And for myself and Adita, take care now.